Uh, greetings, my name is Bob Kimmerite. I'm an extension specialist at the University of Georgia. I uh, cover corn, cotton, soybeans, and peanuts. The Panhandle of Florida is one of my favorite places in the world, and so I'm glad that even and appreciative, even though we can't get together for this meeting because of COVID, I'm appreciative that we can do this virtually, and hopefully, hopefully next year we'll be in person and we can talk. And I'm especially excited to talk to you about cotton because when I first started, when I graduated from the University of Florida, and started working cotton in 20 or in 2000, about all I talked about was seedling disease. And I was talking about nemesis, there's a huge opportunity. My goal for today with you all, as far as cotton goes, is what are the opportunities for you as cotton growers to make more money? Now I'm very realized it's tough to get excited about cotton sometimes when the price of cotton 60 cent or whatever it is looking into the future. It can be very difficult, but when I tell you that your management decisions to manage nematode, to manage, manage target spot, to manage areola mildew, uh, to manage stem fill M leaf spot with potassium deficiency, you can make tremendous yield increases by doing so. If you choose not to fight nematodes, if you choose not to fight target spot, if you choose not to fight areola mildew, you may not lose anything. Okay, But if you do have a battle on your hands and you're not prepared for it, that can lead to tremendous losses, significant losses. And so the opportunity I have here today and what I'm excited about is to share with you what I think are some of the most important things as far as disease and nematode management going into cotton into 2021. If we look back at 2020, the number one problem we had on cotton in my wheelhouse and my world was bull rot. And the sad thing is there's not much we can do about bull rot going into 2021. Bull rot, depending upon the weather we're gonna have in the coming season in 2021, it could be very minimal or we could have a real problem with it. So bull rot can be a problem, but everything else is something we can manage. Looking at the climate predictions, we're predicted to have a climate of a La Nina this year, this, this winter, the winter of 2020-2021. So what do you care about that? The reason why a La Nina may be important to you is with a La Nina in the southeastern United States, we're expecting warmer, drier weather. What does warmer, drier weather mean, especially the warmer? It may mean we may not freeze crops back, we may not freeze disease back, we may not freeze the nematode back. If we leave stalks in the field, if we leave the uh, cotton stalks and they don't freeze, we may have more problems with that. So be prepared. If I know we're in a La Nina situation going into 2021, the first thing that occurs to me for cotton growers is I'm worried about nematodes. We rely upon colder soils as far as helping us with that. Let's talk nematodes. I recognize, and you tell me every time I come to see you that reniform nematodes are the most important problem you got, and when I show you pictures of root knot nematodes, some of your eyes glaze over because you don't believe that's a problem. I can tell you from being in Escambia County this year with a very good grower when we had a field day in 2020, I can tell you that yes, that grower had reniform nematodes, but the grower also had root knot nematodes. Root knot nematodes are in your area, maybe not to the same level as reniform nematodes, but you need to be aware of them. You have one chance, one real good chance if you're gonna fight root knot nematodes or in your situation, if you think it's reniform nematodes, you have one good chance. When you close the furrow, you've made most of your management decisions. Going into 2021, I want you to educate yourself. I want you to look at the opportunities because once that furrow closed, you're basically gonna live with that for the remainder of the season. Let's talk varieties, okay? We know that we have root knot nematode resistant varieties from Phytogen, we'll have them from Stoneville, We'll have them from Delta Pine. We've got root knot nematode resistant varieties out there for you to consider. In addition, in addition, we're likely to have reniform nematode resistant varieties coming out from Phytogen as well in 2021. Okay? We continue to collect data. What are the advantages of using these root knot or these reniform nematode resistant varieties? The biggest advantage of them is that you do not need the same nematicide inputs. You can save on inputs by using root knot nematode or reniform resistant varieties. The second thing is you do not build those populations up for the coming season. You plant a reniform or root knot nematode resistant variety and your farm in 2021 going into 2022 your cotton problems as far as nematodes go will be reduced. Okay? Less need for nematicides, less buildup. What about yields? All right, what about yields? Again, yield is a complex thing. It's not just nematodes. There's a lot of factors involved, but I can tell you that some of our varieties out there within, in the nematode infested fields where they should be used, we're seeing a good yield advantage in using them as well. Something to educate yourselves on. 
The second thing to talk about is if you are not going to use a root knot nematode resistant variety or you're not going to use a reniform resistant variety or you tell me that something like sting nematode is a problem, you have one chance, one chance to use a nematicide. I'd like you to consider using Telone, but I know you're probably not. Going into 2021, before you close the furrow, before you close the furrow on a cotton crop, I want you to think, is there a place for AgLogic? AgLogic is the new formulation, the new brand name for Aldicarb, formerly known as Temic. Is there a place for Vellum? You know, we've been using Vellum Total, which is the fluopyram plus the imidacloprid. Uh, Bear Crop Science is probably going to be sticking with Vellum alone, the fluopyram. Is there a place for that? That's a granular product versus a liquid in furrow product. In your area in Florida, you may not even be able to use the Ag Logic based upon what the regulations are. That leaves you with, you're not using Telone, you may not be able to use Ag Logic, you may not like the resistant varieties, but nematodes are real for you. What's your opportunity? Hopefully you're rotating the field away from cotton, but if you're not, and even if you are, Vellum may be a solution out there for you. We can also follow the Vellum after time or any nematicide once we get to about the fifth to seventh true leaf stage we can come back in with an application of Vidate. So there are opportunities. Nematodes can take, in my trials we can see nematodes taking four, five, six hundred pounds of lint away from us. The only chance you have is what variety you're going to plant, what field you're going to plant into based upon the rotation, and are you going to use nematicide. I failed to mention seed treatment nematicides. Seed treatment nematicides are convenient. You don't have to worry about calibration. You don't have to worry about liquid and furrow applications or granular and furrow applications. Just recognize that the seed treatments, while they're convenient, they will not offer you the same amount of control that you can get out of the nematicides, whether it's granular or liquid. One opportunity, don't miss that. And don't miss the chance to educate yourself on the varieties that are out there. I know what varieties people like. I hear farmers talk about them all the time, and they're not always going to be nematode resistant, but at least educate yourself on what those would be. Get one chance. Okay? In the past, in the very recent past, in fact, in the recent past, prior to about 2007, 2008, about the only foliar disease, the only leaf disease on cotton that I was aware of that I worried about was something called Stemphilium leaf spot. Stemphilium leaf spot will occur in almost every cotton field every year. Stemphilium leaf spot is caused by a fungus, but the underlying cause of that fungus, that stemphilium fungus getting in there, is going to be a potassium deficiency. A potassium deficiency. I care about stemphilium leaf spot for two reasons. The first reason I care about it, it is a disease and you do need to manage it, but you cannot manage it with a fungicide. If you're going to manage stemphilium leaf spot, you have to have the right potassium you need to have the right nutrient levels in your field, and you have to help have help from some moisture. You can have all the potassium in the field you want, but if it's so dry you're not taking it up, it's going to be a problem for you. So Stemphilium I care about for that reason. Second reason I care about Stemphilium is because you do not control it with the fungicide. You need to recognize what Stemphilium is. Oftentimes it's associated with the cotton showing the autumn, the red, the yellows, the autumn colors, you recognize that you cannot control that using a fungicide. So what fungicides, or where are fungicides important? And I'll say this, the growers in the Panhandle of Florida are a lot like the growers here in Georgia. There are two diseases, a foliar disease of cotton, that are most important to me, and I think are most effective of affecting you, okay? The first one's target spot caused by Coronespra. If target spot does not matter to the growers in the Panhandle of Florida, cotton growers listening to me talk today, it probably doesn't matter anywhere in the United States. You all are at ground zero for target spot. Target spot is caused by a fungus. It causes significant defoliation starting in the lower part of the canopy and can lead to about 80% defoliation over time. It can happen very, very quickly. Target spot will survive in the uh, crop debris from the previous year. When would I start looking? When you reach first bloom or are approaching first bloom, I would start checking. Either have your scout check or you check. Are you seeing in the interior of the canopy? Are you seeing the, the marble size, the target shaped spots? If you are, it's time to consider a fungicide application. What's at stake? A timely fungicide application, a good fungicide program with one, maybe two fungicides on cotton when, they, when target spots a problem. I've seen it save up to 200 pounds of lint in Auburn and Alabama. They've talked about three to 400 pounds of lint. 
I would say in your area, if you're listening to me now, cotton growers in your area, especially under wet years, are likely to have between two and 300 to 400 pounds of lint that are at risk that you could protect. My recommendation, start checking at the first week of bloom. In my studies, the most critical week of bloom is the third week of bloom. Some growers here just automatically spray. That may or may not be necessary, but they may automatically spray, and you can look at it then. Okay? What fungicides do we have out there? We got azoxystrobin. We have a number of fungicides which are, which are available, but the number one fungicide that's been effective has been uh, Preaxor. Preaxor has been our top fungicide. We also have some products, some Irivis-based products coming out from Syngenta, which has also looked very good on target spot. The azoxystrobin, inexpensive, but just hasn't had quite the power that the Preaxor or the new Miravis based program from Syngenta have. So you got opportunity there. I know with the cotton prices, I know all about the cotton prices. I hear growers every day talking about it. Why do you talk to us about spending more money on something we didn't do in the past with the cotton prices they are? Again, ask yourself, is protecting 200 pounds of lint, 300 pounds of lint, is that valuable to you? And can you do it? If it is, then think about a fungicide for target spot. Once you get to 20-30% defoliation, you might as well forget it. You cannot go back. Just like you can't go back and fight nematodes, you can't go back and put those leaves on the plant. So just be aware of it. Not everybody needs it all the time, but be aware of it. The second disease that's out there is one that you may be less familiar with. It's called areolate mildew, ramularia. And this is one that has been severe for the past few years in Georgia and some fields. It's also been severe in some areas in Florida as well. Areolic mildew can rapidly defoliate the crop. Unlike target spot, which starts in the bottom, the areolic mildew may start at any part of the crop and can lead to near 100% defoliation in a relatively short period of time. Does it pay to spray? Does it pay to spray? We've had a number of on-farm trials out with our county agents in Georgia, and where we have used fungicides to protect the crop once we see the onset of areolic mildew, we have seen significant yield increases that have more than paid for themselves. The difference between the areolic mildew and the target spot as far as management goes. The first thing is the target spot is going to start in the bottom of the plant. You're going to have to look harder for it. The areolic mildew will probably come in later. We'll start more in the middle to the top of the plant. The second thing is when we're talking target spot, we're talking about products like Preaxor, this Miravis based product as being some of our best. When we talk about areolic mildew, those are still outstanding products, but we're still getting a good control out of using a product like azoxystrobin. So we can control areolate mildew, at least for now, at less of a cost than we can for the target spot. But both of them are important. When would I start consider spraying, or why, why would I spray for areolate mildew? The first thing is, are you finding it in your field? Or is your neighbor finding it in his field or her field, okay? Second thing is, if you're within four weeks of defoliating that cotton, if within four weeks you plan to defoliate the cotton, I would not worry about areolic mildew. It's not going to be a problem. But if you're more than four weeks out and this disease is coming in, it's something I would consider. Target spot. I would start looking for it the first week of bloom. By the sixth week of bloom, you've either controlled it and are successful. You never needed to control it or you didn't control it and it got away from you. But by the sixth week of bloom, there's nothing you really need to do about it. Again, we recognize that cotton prices are not what we would want them to be. But if you miss the opportunity to fight the nematode problems, the cheapest way to fight nematode problems is a combination of a good crop rotation and using a resistant variety. If you do not fight them with that or do not fight them with a nematicide, you live with the consequences for the rest of the season. You can't make it up. Okay? With the cotton leaf diseases, especially the target spot and the areola mildew, when we look at those diseases, if you do not control them and they are a problem, we're talking about losing between 150, 300, 350 pounds of lint. And again, was it worth it to you to do it? The last disease I want to talk about is cotton leaf roll dwarf virus, CLRDV. I hear a lot of people refer to this disease as blue disease. It's really not. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're saying, but really it's cotton leaf roll dwarf virus. It's different than blue disease in Brazil. Cotton leaf roll dwarf virus was first found in uh, southeastern or in the uh, lower Alabama in 2017. We recognize that it's in a number of states now. I'll say this about the, the, area, the uh, uh, cotton leaf roll dwarf virus in Georgia in 2020. I can say that we probably had some of this virus in most fields. I can tell you that we had very, very little yield loss to it in most fields. It's an aphid vector disease, an aphid vector virus. 
You cannot control it by controlling, by, uh, controlling the aphids. That's not going to work. Controlling aphids won't reduce it. I can also tell you at this point we can't recommend one variety being more susceptible or one variety being more resistant at this point in time. So if I tell you it was in nearly every field in Georgia in 2020, but I don't think it caused much significant loss at all, certainly compared to the other diseases we've talked about, why would I be concerned? Because I can tell you at least three, maybe four fields in the state of Georgia right now where it did cause significant loss. And I can't explain why it was severe in one field and not in the field across the street. And when you have a disease which is capable of causing significant loss, but you can't explain why it's severe in one field and not the next one, it causes me to be concerned. So going into 2021, recognize there is cotton leaf rule dwarf virus out there, CLRDV. Recognize that it has so many symptoms <coughs> that none of us, none of us really know every time what we're looking at. We know what looks like it, we know what might be it, but without testing it, we're not really sure. The last thing is, the biggest mistake I could make and probably you could make is saying it wasn't a problem in Georgia or in Florida in 2019 or 2020, I'm not going to worry about it. We're not there yet. The biggest thing we knew is recognize there is a virus out there. We continue to study it. We continue to look to our colleagues in Florida, in Alabama, and other states as well to try and come up with a solution on how we can fix it. I'll wrap up with cotton on that note. The most important thing is you get recognized cotton, even though the price, we need to fight the diseases and the nematodes. The second thing is you get one chance to be on time. You get one chance before you cover the furrow and you get one chance to be timely. Don't miss those opportunities. And thank you for this opportunity that I can be with you.